PV process what? <laughs> yeah. Variable. <laughs> process value. Okay. So the process itself, the process here, you measure something, right? We actually has a process value. Let's say I measure temperature. So my pressure or the process value is the, the temperature that I measure. So the measuring device will send a process value into what we call it the controller, right? Inside the controller are compared to the set point. SP is set point. So as I said, now we are in this part. Previously, we are talking about the process dynamic over here, right? This one, the measuring device, you will learn in topics 3. Now we are in the controller. Inside the controller, normally, we have uh, two types of signal, right? One is pneumatic type, the other one is electronics, right? So whatever signal that I set inside here, the pneumatic or electronics, I compare to the set point, and it generates a E. E here refer to error. And then let's go to the controller. The controller will have one P here. This small P is not a capital letter P, it's a small P refer to output. Okay? So if you look at this one, E is error, P is output. On 2.3 onward, we mostly learn about E and P, which is referring to this part. Okay? And uh, very boring now today. <laughs> because no calculation. I think you all like calculation. Right? When it comes to calculation, things like that, uh, everyone looks very sleepy. Uh. This so, whole, this whole it, but uh, that also means that uh, why you all choose to be an uh, engineer, right? Huh? Because you all like mathematics, you all like calculation, you don't like calculation, no? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you, if you like uh, long calculation like that, right? It means you need to go and study law. Right? Law or uh, you don't like law, right? If you look at my definition like that, you feel very long already. I think in the law term, uh, it's even longer, right? One sim simple words or one simple things they can use a very long way to uh, describe. So I guess most of you are science students, uh, so you like calculation. Calculation, then we do some calculation. Okay, all right. The first definition we have is the error. Error is the input to the controller, right? If you look at this one, error is that if you look at the controller, E is actually input, right? So the error is actually input to the controller. We have two types of error that we need to calculate. The first one we call it uh, absolute error, which is uh, represented by this small e this small e, okay? And the definition of it is deviation of the process value, PV is the process value uh, of the controller from the set point, SP is, uh, set point is SP. So the formula is E equal to HT minus PV, all right? Just bear in mind first, then later we will go through uh, some example. The second one uh, of the error is percentage of error. Percentage of error represent by percentage of E, okay? And this is equal to uh, E divided by E maximum range times 100%. What does that mean? Which means that E is what? E is set point minus process value divided by P, uh, E max range here. E is error maximum range. Error maximum range is basically the process value maximum. So your process value maximum minus process value minimum. And because it's a percentage, so you must multiply by 100%, okay? So for the percentage of error, use this formula. For the absolute error, use this formula, okay? Percentage of error means what? Once my, if you look at this table itself, this uh, floor diagram itself, after I measure something, I compare to the set point, the controller will receive this percentage of error. If I receive higher percentage of error, which means I have to do more actions to collect it, right? And then how to collect it depends on the, break, uh, the output 
here. Okay. Normally, the output from the controller we have two types. One is the uh, electronic type. The other one is the uh, pneumatic type. Electronic types normally is four to twenty milliampere. The pressure one or the pneumatic one normally is in psi, which is in the pressure. We'll go through some example later, and you can see from there. But just bear in mind the error are the calculation based on these two formula, and is the input to the controller. And then the next one, let's say the example transducer range. 4 to 20 milliamp. Set point is 0 0.5 milli uh, ampere, right? Process value is 13.7 milli ampere. What is the percentage of error? Okay. This transducer, where is the transducer normally located? Based on this diagram itself, where is the transducer normally located? It's actually at the measuring device, right? Remember your measuring device. Let's say you measure the temperature. The temperature will send out a, either a pneumatic signal or an electronic signal to the controller, right? If you refer back to your topics one, uh, which I believe most of you forgot already. Yeah. Right? But forgot is okay, I can always refer back. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just remember the measure device sent out as a signal in either it's electronics or the pneumatic. In this case, the example we have, we send out a process value with 13.7 milliamp. Right? So this one is the one that we send out from transducer. Okay? It's not sent out from the controller. Uh, this 13.7 milliamp, the process value is sent out from the transducer. But the transducer has a range of 4 to 20 milliamp, and then the set point is 0 0.5. So remember the percentage of E is equal to set point minus process value divided by my maximum, right? The um, max, my, yeah, the PV max minus PV min, right? Then time hundred percent. So what is my set point? Set point is zero point five. So I put zero point five minus my process value thirteen divided by four to twenty milliamp. Four is minimum. Twenty is my maximum for the process value. And then if you calculate, you got minus eighty two point five percent. Okay. So which means that the process value compared to the set point. Set point is very low in this case, right? It's only 0 0.5. But I send in a process value which is 13.7, so much higher. So the percentage of the difference is minus 82.5. So the controller receiving has to be able to generate output based on this very big uh, uh, percentage of error. Okay? Just now we talk about the input to the controller. Controller output is represented by this P, which is this part, controller output. This one, okay? And controller output, I uh, usually is 4 to 20 milli uh, M. This transducer is referred to the system here. The uh, transducer also normally 4 to 20 milli M or the pneumatic one. The output here is also mostly 4 to 20 milliamp and the if let's say it's the this one is this one is for the electronic type, right? Electronic signal. The controller output electronic signal. There is another one we call it the pneumatic, right? New new pneumatic? How to spell? Something like this. Okay? The new <laughs> Pneumatic is normally the pressure, so we we have it in the PSI. Okay, got one U here, right? P and U. Uh. Okay, so the pneumatic signal come out from the controller output is normally in PSI. Okay, which is measure the pressure. But if let's say it's electronic, it is four to twenty milliamp. And what about the 
formula for the pneumatic output. I did it all this. I wanted to show you this one. So the formula for the percentage of output, right, which is equal to percentage of P. Just now the percentage of error is percentage of E, right? This is percentage of P equal to P divided by P max range time, 100%, okay? P is what? P is P minus P minimum, okay? Divide by P max minus P minimum time 100. <coughs> the P here is not pressure, it's the output. So, percentage of output is the output minus output minimum divided by maximum minus uh, uh, output maximum minus output minimum times 100%. Uh, we will go through example to see. Let me see any example we have. We don't have the example for this one, but in the tutorial you will see this example. But the important things that you need to bear in mind is the output control is small p refer to the signal that I uh, calculate and I send out to the final control elements. Okay. So far okay. This one need to give example. When I come to tutorial, I think it's easier to understand. But you just pay in mind, controller, it has an input, which is normally based on the error. The output is based on the percentage of output, and normally set up by the signal uh, 4 to 20 million. Let me finish this slide. I think the next one, the classification, uh, we can uh, uh, learn it next week. The controller can be tuned to perform Reverse and direct action. Reverse and direct action is very important. This one. Okay. What is direct action mean? This definition is important now uh, because your tutorial has this. If the output of the sense sign as the error, if means that if error increases, the controller outputs increase. Which means that what? If the error increases my output, which is the P, increase, right? This one we call direct action, okay? The other one, the reverse is, if the error increase, let's say error increase, the output decrease, output is P, right? A small P, decrease. And what we call this one is reverse action, okay? For the direct action, right, the example we have is if the level control of the outflow, uh, example is the level control by the uh, outlet flow control. If level increase, the outlet valve should open more, right? So which means that if the level increase, if level increase means I compare to the set point, my error increase. And at the same time, the output valve open more. Output valve means if I want my output valve to open more, the controller should add more. So the controller output is P, it add more. So error increase, controller increase, we call it direct action. In another way, the reverse one, what we have is like examples of the uh, room heating. Temperature increase, heating has to reduce. What does it mean? Temperature increase means that my temperature compared to the set point, the error increase, right? But my heating decrease, I must send out a controller action to reduce the, uh, let's say, heating elements. So the process, uh, the, the output itself decrease. So the error increase, the output of the controller reduce, we call it reverse action, all right? So, why it's important to know whether it's a direct action or a reverse action? Because when you later calculate your gain in your uh, tutorial, for the direct action, uh, if I'm not wrong, is the plus <coughs> sign. Your gain should be plus. Let me double check. Okay.
So for the direct action, your gain is negative, so you have a negative gain. You have a negative gain, right? For the reverse action, you have a positive gain. Gain is what? Gain is the K value, right? So every time when you see your controller react like this, error increase, output increase, is a direct action, so your K should be a negative K. And when you have E increase, P reduce, is a reverse action, and the K value or the gain itself should be a plus. Alright? And I think uh, that's all for the today. So we started the controller already. Please remember what is the uh, error percentage, output percentage, what is error, what is output. Out error is in to the controller, output is out from the controller. Of course, we also learn about the second order. Uh, uh, process model today. Tomorrow we will learn about tomorrow. or the next week, next week, next week, next week, okay? Next week we learn this three. This three thing is very important. PI, PD and PID, okay? The one is next week. Alright? Anyone who want to stay for the next one